so welcome everyone so in this session i will discuss about the solution of house property question that came in the mains 2023 commerce optional paper 1 so this is the income tax question and here we have to calculate the income under the head house property these type of questions are very regular very very predictable question in the previous year also these questions have been repeated so if we solve the previous year questions multiple time then these are very easy to handle now if you see this question in this question they have asked 15 marks question 15 marks basically means that we get 10.5 minutes okay this is 15 marks we get 10.5 minutes and this 10.5 minutes is more than sufficient to solve this question this question is very very easy question okay so this much is the time and this is i will say easy question because directly we can just put the figures and we can find the solution okay we will provide the solution of this uh, question in the pdf format on a telegram channel you can check the link of the telegram channel in the description of this video so let's start basically this is the question number 3b that means this is a question of choice it is not compulsory question but i will say if you know other questions of this question that means you know question number 3a or 3c then this question is very very attemptable this question is must do question the accuracy will be highest and the mistake chances are very very less okay so in this question they are asking about computation of the taxable income and this they are asking for the assessment year 2020 to 23 they have given about the details of the assessment year house one is constructed in february 2022 whereas house two is constructed in 2012 how will the outcome of the situation be treated as per the provisions of the income tax act so in the second part they are asking about the treatment of the interest under the house property so first they ask about the house in, uh, the income from the taxable the, the income from the house property and second they ask about the interest treatment under the house property okay 15 marker 10 minutes very easy question let's start so first is that we should read the question very carefully we have discussed about the requirement now if you see the data they have given the standard rent they have given municipal valuation fair rent de facto rent municipal taxes fire insurance premium water benefits tax interest on loan taken for the construction of house rent of lease and then use of assets has been given so they have given the usage of asset first property is for the self occupied purpose and second is for the rented purpose okay so let's start the solution now if we see the solution basically for calculation of uh, annual value house property number 1 which is on the self occupied basis that means this property is being used for the purpose of self occupation so this property will have the annual value of nil that means nil annual value okay and in the second property we will calculate the gross annual value we will provide for the deductions and we will have that complete computation in this approach we will follow for this question so let's start from the first part that is calculation of income for the self occupied property that means house one so for the house one annual value is taken to be nil and this is as per the section number 23 2a this is nil basically one thing we should understand that if we mention the section number it gives us added advantage so always try to add the section number as much as possible i know that you may not remember section number 23 2a but you can remember section number 23 at least so you can mention that that's also good right so annual value is nil now from the annual value only one deduction is allowed that is deduction under section 24b okay so in the information given the interest deduction is allowed so if you see the question how much is the interest 
तो दिस इंटरेस्ट ऑन लोन टेकन फॉर द हाउस कंस्ट्रक्शन इज ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड दिस इज फॉर द हाउस वन नाउ दे आर सेंग हाउस वन इज कंस्ट्रक्टेड इन द फेबररी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू सो बेसिकली हाउस वन इज कंस्ट्रक्टेड इन फेबररी सपोज दिस इज द टाइम लाइन दिस इज मार्च थर्टी वन टू दिस इज फेबररी 2022 right so the construction got completed in february 2022 now basically this interest is of two type okay this interest is of two types one is the pre construction interest and second is the post construction period interest to so pre construction and post construction first of all what is the meaning of pre construction so the year in which the construction is completed so here the construction got completed construction got completed on in february 22 that means in the previous year 21 22 right that means in this case the pre construction interest will be till 31st march 2021 this is the definition of pre construction period interest that pre construction period interest is calculated till the end of the financial year which is ending just before the year in which the construction is completed okay so in this case construction got completed in the 2122 so on 31st march 2021 that interest till this date will be taken as the pre construction period okay now in the question they are mentioning interest on loan taken to construct the house now they have not mentioned is it pre construction period or post construction period so we will assume that this is a post construction period okay so pre construction period is not given we are assuming that it is not there so there is no treatment in case they give the pre construction period interest then the 1/5 amount is allowed for every year but in our case this is not there okay pre construction period interest is not there post construction period is completely allowed okay so we are assuming that this amount 22500 is the post construction so this is completely allowed right so nil amount and from this we will reduce 22500 now this we get the final value that is a loss under head house property number 1 from the first house this loss is there 22500 okay so okay so in our exam no need to show this i was using this only for your understanding purpose the content given in the green format this was for the purpose of understanding but in the exam no need to write all this content in the exam you will write only this content which is outside the green box okay now second house that is a house property 2 is very important house property 2 calculation is something which is detailed one so we will calculate the income from house property 2 house property 2 is the rented property this is rented for lease right this is rented that means it is given on the rent okay so this is the normal property and here we will calculate the gross annual value and then we will calculate the net annual value and then we will calculate the income taxable okay so here first we will calculate the reasonably expected rent because if you want to calculate the gross annual value first we need to calculate the reasonably expected rent we compare the reasonably expected rent with the actual rent and then we get the gross annual value from the gross annual value we reduce the municipal taxes then we get the net annual value from the net annual value we reduce the standard deduction and the interest amount that is how we get the taxable income okay so here let's start for the calculation of gross annual value first we will take the step 1 so step 1 that is calculation of reasonably 
expected rent which is also known as RER so here this will be the uh, the data is given in the question I am taking the question data okay you can take this PDF from the telegram channel so this amount is given that is a municipal value of 45,000 okay okay this information is not relevant because this house property is self-occupied so this calculation is not required only the data of house property 2 is required and here they have given municipal valuation of 45,000 so we will write municipal value rupees 45,000 okay this will be the inner calculation because after the inner calculation we will write outer right second is fair rent fair rent is also given that is 60,000 okay now we will take the higher of 2 higher of above 2 this becomes our item number A that is 60,000 okay now this 60,000 this will be compared with the standard rent basically this is the way we calculate it that is B and this standard rent is basically 36,000 now we compare the A and B that is we take the lower of A and B which is basically 36,000 okay so 36,000 is the lower of A and B now from this again we compare the actual rent that is step 2 okay so now in this question they have not used the word actual rent but they have used the word de facto rent de facto rent is basically nothing but the actual rent in this case okay de facto rent is basically that actual rent minus the cost of amenities okay so de facto rent is the actual rent here in this case so we will write de facto rent or actual rent we can say received or receivable okay so this is how much 45,000 now we will compare both and the step 3 will be higher of step 1 and step 2 that is higher of RER reasonably expected rent and the de facto rent so this is 45,000 okay so 45,000 is the step 3 and step 3 is nothing but the gross annual value gross annual value that is a step number 3 okay so this is a gross annual value so we will uh, write on the next page now gross annual value 45,000 okay now from the gross annual value we will reduce the taxes okay now if we read the question it says municipal taxes paid during the previous year okay so municipal taxes are allowed only if they are paid okay it has also given one more tax that is a water benefit tax water benefit tax is assumed to be part of the benef uh, municipal taxes okay but the, it is saying due but outstanding that means it is not paid because this amount is not paid so it cannot be taken as a deduction fine so had it been paid then we would have taken the deduction so as of now we will only take the deduction of the municipal taxes paid So municipal taxes paid amount is 7,250 rupees and it gives us the net annual value. NAV, this is 37,750 rupees. So 37,750 rupees is the NAV net annual value now from this we further provide for the deductions so from this amount deductions are allowed now these deductions are of two types first is under section 24a under section 24a the deduction is the standard deduction 
and this is basically at the rate of 30 percent. 30 percent standard reduction is available from this. And then we have section 24B deduction, which is interest deduction. So standard deduction is 30 percent. That means 37750 at the rate of 30 percent. The amount is basically 11,325. Okay, how do we calculate this? 37,750 into 30 percent. And you must have the calculator. Calculator is allowed in the exam. Calculator up use karenge and that is completely allowed in the exam. So 11,325 is the standard deduction. We will allow it as deduction. Interest paid. Interest paid is basically 5,750. So 5,750. Okay. Be basically here the brackets indicating the negative. That is a reduction. Okay. So this is the final income. Income under head house property. Two this amount is 20,675. So basically this is the profit or the income under had the house property 20,675. Okay. So in the property one there was a loss and in the property two there is a profit. Okay. So we will combine both and that will be the final income income under the house property. Fine. So I am moving to the next page because if I write below then it might create a problem of viewing. So we are calculating the taxable income. Underhead house property. So house property one. And house property two house property one. There is a loss. Twenty two thousand five hundred and house property two. There is income. That is 20,675. So net, there is a loss of 1875 rupees. This is the final amount of calculation. This is the final amount of calculation. So 1825, one, one not 75. 1825 is the final amount. Now we will give some notes. Okay, basically, to get good marks, you should give the notes. If you give the notes, then it makes the examination examiner very very confident that you know the concept so whatever amount we are not including in the table we will tell why we are not including so there are certain amounts like we have not taken fire insurance because fire insurance premium is not allowed water benefit tax we have not taken because it is due it is not still paid and then we have also not considered rent on lease so these three item will say that we have not considered because of a specific reason and we will mention the reason why we have not considered. So we will write that number one, water benefit tax is not paid, thus not allowed. Okay. In case it is paid, then we can assume that this is part of the municipal taxes. And if it is paid, then we will allow it on the paid basis. Okay. Now, note number two, we will write about the fire insurance premium. So fire insurance premium. And also the rent on the lease. Okay. The we must we might have taken the land on uh, lease. Okay. That means the property where this house is located. Okay, that land where this house is uh, constructed, that land might be on lease from some authority or so. So that rent, if you are paying, that is not allowed. Okay, so fire insurance premium and the rent for lease is not allowed. Okay, we have given this explanation also. Now the third thing is the interest treatment. Okay, so interest treatment in the house property one, we have already seen, we have assumed, we can write, we have assumed the interest is post construction. So it is 100% allowed in the same year. In the house property two, the house was constructed in the 2012. If you see the question back, the question indicates house one is constructed in the February 2022, whereas house two is in the 2012. That means the pre-construction period of 
pre construction period interest of this house was already allowed deduction in those 5 years where it got completed okay so somewhere till 2017 that pre construction period interest would have been allowed now it is not required so definitely interest must be post construction there is no need to assume interest is post construction period only so this is also 100% allowed okay so this is how we can complete the transfer these notes that i have given at the end are very important and the presentation the way i have given complete presentation the calculation of house property 1 the calculation of house property 2 and the calculation of the total income combined these three and the final notes this is required in the exam how much space you get so in the exam you get three pages and three pages are sufficient more than sufficient okay this is simple question direct question income tax is always easy income tax questions are very very doable you should always try and practice the income tax the chances of mistake are very very less because there is no uh, very very less interlinkage with the multiple figures in case of accounting if you suppose start from the amalgamation so you might do some mistake but here in this case the chances of mistake are very very less okay so you should always try this type of question i will also solve more questions of all the subject and i will come back with more videos okay and i will also tell you i want to inform you that we are providing the past year 20 uh, past year solutions till 2023 past year solutions are available with us till 2023 okay from 1979 so this is very very important that you use them because lot of questions are being repeatedly asked in the exam okay we are also providing more solutions of other questions please see the description and please see how we can solve the mains 23 questions okay if you want any type of guidance from me or you want to connect with my team feel free to contact on this number 9811599537 and we are located in the heart of upsc preparation hub that is the orn delhi you can come and you can meet you can visit us on this space okay old rajendranagar delhi you can come and you are most welcome to meet me and the my team okay so see you thank you very much god bless you